I'll train you on data types in Java. In a previous tutorial, we discussed variables, whereby we end the data type, variable name, and then we assign the value, all right? So if you have not watched our video on variables, remember to check on our video. Now, in this tutorial, I'll explain more about data types, the types and each for each will give an example. So remember to subscribe, like, share and comment and for the courses you can visit our website at landtechflow.com. Right. Now, let's start. What are data types? Data types refers to the attributes which tells a computer or interpreter on how the programmer intends to use the data. Or else we can say that data types specifies the values and the sizes which can be stored in a variable. They are now so data types they are just the values or it specifies the values and the sizes which can be stored in a variable. So here we'll be talking about the type with the values which are stored and also the their sizes. So let's see. There are only two types of data types in Java, right? So the two types of data types are primitive and the non primitive data types. Right? Now primitive data types they are building blocks of data manipulation in Java. They are the most basic data types available. They include boolean, char, short, int, floor, double, byte, and long. All right? And for the non-primitive, these are data types that are not predefined in Java. Instead, they are created by programmers. So you create for yourself. If it's a string, so you have string arrays, classes, and databases, and the etc. There are so many. There are so many. They are predefined. They are not predefined in Java. So this one, someone creates for themselves. If you want to create a string, you create for yourself. If you want to create arrays, you create for yourself. If you are creating a class, you create for yourself. If it's an interface, you create for yourself. So these are only two types of data types that we'll be discussing today. All right. Now. Here we have a diagram here showing data types. All right. So this is then. So we have data types. So we have primitive and non-primitive. So those are the two types of data types. Then for the primitive, we have boolean and the numeric. For the boolean, we have boolean. All right. Here we'll give now the boolean values, which are false or true. All right. Now and for the numeric, we have character and the dangle. Now the character will have the char. So these are primitive. Then in general, we love integer and a floating point. All right. Now the integer, we are byte, short, int, long. So those are the integers. All right. Then floating point, which have decimal places. These are now the data types that have a primitive data types that have a decimal point. All right. So they are only to float in table. All right. Now. On the other side, we have non-primitive, which are string, array, interfaces. We have classes. So those are various types of non-primitive data types. So this diagram tries to explain more about that. Now, we want to see some differences between primitive and non-primitive data types. For the primitive data types, always have a value while non-primitive can be none, all right? So you can't leave when you're dividing and when you're dividing a primitive data type, you can't it's must you have a value, you assign a value to it. But to the when you're creating your non-primitive is either a string or is either a class, so it can be none. Not must or it's not must you assign a value. The primitive Type starts with a lowercase letter, while non-primitive start with an uppercase. So when you're writing your primitive, so let's say this is int, 
all right this is int this is int and then on the other side no this is int and should be then the other one should be string right let's say you're writing string and find the two tada types all right so this one start with the lower case and this one should start with the upper case all right so when you're writing string should be start with a upper case right this one is also a, so for the classes also as you said in our syntax chapter we said that a class a class name should start with what with the upper case so that's all so the other one here we were talking about here is that primitive data types are already defined in Java. They, they are already defined. While well, non-primitive non, non data types are created by the programmer. So these ones are already created in Java. So and their values are already assigned. So as we'll be discussing our next table where we'll have values range, range, all the values range, their sizes. And their default values. So these one are already defined in Java. While non-primitive data types are created by programmer, you create for yourself. If it's a string, you create according to your specification. You can create any data type according to your program. All right. Non-primitive data types can be used to call method to perform certain operation, while primitive types cannot. So let's say you are creating a, a string, you are creating a string, or you can create a class, you can create a class. Now a class you can use to call method, you can use to call method, or function, methods in Java are what you call function, alright? You can use to call function to form a certain operation, but primitive, you cannot, you cannot. The size of primitive depends on data type. The size of primitive type depends on data type. While non-primitive type, they all have the same sizes. So for this one, we'll be seeing various sizes of each data type. All right. But for the primitive, they have all. They have the same. They have the same sizes. All right. Now, the next, we love this table now. We love this table whereby it is trying to explain. Okay, sorry. So this is a table which is trying to explain more about primitive data types. You can see, you can compare this is Boolean. You can have Boolean, you can have this word. Description, tells to either true or false. Default value is false. So you love the size is one bit. Then example you have true or false, then you'll have range values. So this is true or false. For the byte, it has it is a two complements, right? Default value is zero, this is 80 bits. Examples now then you'll have the range is 128 to 127. So these are range values. Then we love the char. Alright. Now you need code character, you have this one is the default, which is as a slash. A slash small u, then we have four zeros, all right? Then 16 bits, then this is the example in the lab character. So, this is what this is what so we love now the hint to complement. We have long, so this one you can see there are various range of values is different, range values is different, the sizes is different, sort of. Also, the identified value is also different, all right? And also, the descriptions, and also the same ex examples are different, all right? So, we also have, have said that primitive data types have different sizes, all right? But now, for the non-primitive, they have same sizes, all right? Now, in next part here we'll discuss now each we'll discuss now each primitive data type as we have seen in our table here all right as we have seen our table so these all these types we'll discuss one by one all right we'll start with int data type 
Inti touch drive is has uh, so have said that it has a two bit to cos complement which is to represent integral values. So we can have this value which is this is a an int, this is just a number, and also this is just a number. So you can either have a positive number or a negative number. So this is also long, long data. So this one is also used to store integral values. So like the hint type, but it's a 64 bit to complement. So this one stores lunch numbers. It stores lunch numbers. All right. So for this one, you love long x. So then we love now. This is what? This is a thousand L. So it means it's a lunch number. It's a lunch number. So these one are used to store lunch numbers. All right. Then it can be the same with this one, but this one we use an L here to show it's a lunch number. So long is just the same as in, but this one is a, stores a lunch number. This one stores a small number, right? Now, we love now the float data type. As we have said before, float is used to store a numbers with decimal places or decimal points, right? It's used to store numbers with decimal point, right? Now it's a 32 bit, so, and the is divide value is 0 0.5, this is, it shows F for plotting. So then this is an example, this is an example, you see, 2.4.5F. So this is a, it shows that this is a, this is a floating data type, all right? So it has a decimal point. This is what we mean by decimal point. Then the other one is Boolean. Boolean is just used to store two possible values, which are true or false. As we have been discussing already, so they are used to rescue true or false condition. This type is a one bit, one bit. Its size, but this size cannot be defined precisely. So you cannot have, cannot say that it is this lunch or this. So, and uh, its the default value we have said that is false. Now, when you, are, you have called your boolean value, it can either print false or true. All right. Now, the other one is byte data type. Byte data type is a 8 bit tools complement. And uh, it saves memory lunch arrays where memory saving is most required. So it is four times smaller than integer. It's four times smaller than integer. All right. It can be used instead of a in data type. So this one you can use instead of a in data type is default value is zero. All right. Now we had said that it's four times smaller than integer. All right. So this one is just used for so small numbers. For so small numbers, and uh, we can have int time, int negative ten. So this is a byte. So it can be used instead of what? Can be used instead of an int type. All right. The other one is short data type. So it's a sixteen bit to complement. This default value is zero. It can be used to save a memory space since it's two times smaller than an integer. So for the byte is four times smaller, and this one is what? Two times smaller than integer. As we'll be discussing on typecasting in our next tutorial, we'll see that we'll arrange these down data types according to their sizes. Now, you see, this one is four times smaller than integer, this is two. So it means that this one is so small compared to this one. This is two times smaller than an integer. It can be used, it means that it can be used instead of word, instead of an int. All right, now you can now short this is a number and this one. So these are not just numbers, all right? <coughs> Now, 
The other touch type is um, double. Double is a uh, 64 bit floating point. All right. It's used as the same as float data type. It's used as the same as data type. Float data type, sorry. It's used the same as float data type. It's used for storing values within decimal points or decimal values, right? It's used for storing, but this one stores large numbers. So it stores num large numbers. It's the same as float data type, but this one stores large numbers with decimal point. You can have double, then this is just a, um, an identifier, then you'll have what? This is what? Now this is a number. So 14.6, those that is a. Now, the other one will now, and uh, probably this is the last, this is the last primitive data type we'll be discussing. Is char data type. It's used to is a 16-bit Unicode character. It's used to store characters, a single character. It's used to store a single character where it's enclosed in a single in a single quote. It's enclosed in a single quote. We can have char letter K. So this is letter K, and it has what? It has a single quote, right? Now, for the other type. Is string and the string is the only non primitive data type that we will discuss in our today's tutorial. A string is just you'll say that it's a non primitive data type since it refers to an object, it is used to store test. The string values or the string values should be surrounded by double quotes. We'll discuss all this in later chapters. So, string is just a chapter by itself. So later we'll discuss this in our future tutorial where we'll discuss string in titles. We'll see how you can combine string, how you can create string. So, we've said that it should be surrounded by a double quotes. Let's say a string car, we can have Mercedes. Then the system print print line. This is print line. So this is L and A. So print line car. This is what? Which means that you print out car, right? You print out car. So it outputs out Mercedes, right? Now, as you were say or same way, we had discussed. In our, as you are discussing about variables, you said we shown how you can print out this on our net bits, right? On our IDE, right? Now, that's all about our today's tutorial. There was no more much coding or writing programs, it's just explanation of data types. What are they, right? So our today's tutorial was more about theory and uh, explanation. So hope you understand or you understand our, our various styles of data types. Now, in our next tutorial, we'll discuss on typecasting, whereby we'll see how you can change from one data type to the other. So remember to subscribe guys, please subscribe, give it a thumb like, then uh, let's meet in our next tutorial for another amazing content. Thank you.